keep shouting, keep crying out to the Lord. Dear friends, no matter what you are going through, good or not good, keep shouting to the Lord. Keep crying out to the Lord. Keep pouring out your heart, mind, and your whole life, your whole body, mind, heart, and soul to the Lord. Keep connecting with the Lord. Keep storming the heavens and telling the Lord what is in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your life. Dear friends, we get inspiration from today's liturgy, from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 35 to 43, when we hear of the healing of the blind man. Jesus is walking near Jericho. Jesus is in movement and invites you and me to continue being in movement, doing good. Because the spirit we have received, that spirit of, the, of goodness, is not a spirit that should keep us all in one place. It's a spirit that keeps our hearts on fire to move out, to go and love. And Jesus is in movement. His mission was to spread the good news, to be close to the brokenhearted, to heal the blind, to restore health of body, mind, heart, and soul to everyone, to free the prisoners, to be close to his people. And this was Jesus' mission and it is our mission, to be close to the brokenhearted, to heal those who are wounded in me, everywhere, inside and out, to be close to those who suffer. And so Jesus is moving near Jericho and he finds a man sitting on the side of the road begging. At least he was doing something. My brother, my sister, what are you doing with whatever little or much that you have? In whatever situation that you have, what are you doing to make the situation better than it is? Are you doing something? Or oh, I am closing myself somewhere. Healing will not find me there where I am closed. I have to come out no matter what my situation is, and face the world, face the situation, accept the situation, and face it, but with the Lord. And this man hears some sounds, some, the crowd is passing around and is asking, what is happening? And we see that they are telling him that Jesus of Nazareth, from Nazareth, is passing around. So he called out immediately, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. The man recognizes his uncleanness. He recognizes his limits. He recognizes his need for someone to help him. When he, he says, he's a son of David, that is a recognizing the Messiah in Jesus. That Messiah was waiting for a long time. And he had come in Jesus. But people did not even know that he is the Messiah. They did not even understand and believe him as the Messiah. Even today, some of our brothers and sisters, the Jews, do not, they are still waiting for the Messiah. And now this blind man with that intuition, with that little knowledge or that much knowledge in him, is able to recognize and say, Jesus, son of David, meaning that Messiah, that healer, that savior, I waited for a long time. Have mercy on me. Meaning, have pity on me. Meaning, accept my situation. Have compassion on me. Feel with me. Feel that I am suffering. I don't see as others are seeing. My dear brother, my dear sister, you stop a bit to thank God for at least the fact that you are able to see and talk. And to see the beauty and enjoy the beauty around. This man was not seeing. So he's saying, have mercy on me. Have pity on me. Have compassion on me. Feel with me. Feel how I'm feeling. Do we feel with others how they are feeling? Those who are rejoicing, do we rejoice with them? Those who are in pains and anguish, do we also mourn with them? Do we accompany them in their sadness, in their pains? Or we let them struggle alone in life? This life here, we are pilgrims together and we are here to accompany each other, to see what each one of us can do together to move to make life easier for my brother, my sister, whether I know that person or I do not know. Every person is a human being created in the image and likeness of God. And we have one father. And our mission is to be close to the brokenhearted as Jesus was. And so this man says, have pity on me, have compassion on me. And Jesus stops. My brother, my sister, do you stop? Do you stop when people cry out to us? 
even in the silence of the hearts. When we cry out, it's not all about making noise because even God knows what we want even before we ask him, but he wants us to ask. It's also in the silence of our hearts when we lift our hearts, the Lord, look at my heart. You know what is going on there. Help me, heal me, grant me that inner healing because it's that inner healing that will help me to face the outside as it comes. So do we stop? To listen to the beautiful things that others are narrating to us, but also to the pains of others, to the struggles of others, to the, to the sufferings of others like this man. Jesus stops and invites you and me as followers of him to stop always at every moment, to listen to the people around us, to accompany them, to encourage each other, beginning at our families, in our places of work in our schools, in our hospitals, to be an encouraging presence to our brothers and sisters. And as he was as was, Jesus was there listening to him, uh, this man even cried out louder, Jesus, son of David, the Messiah, the healer, the anointed, the Savior, have mercy on me, have compassion on me. And people were stopping this man from, it's like saying, in quotation marks, disturbing Jesus. They were stopping him from, it's like saying, you are making noise for us. Hey, when we are praying in life or when we are living good life, people will make noise to us. When we are praying and connecting with God and with each other, people will no, make noise to us. They will jump on us. They will say, stop it, stop it. As long as you're not doing anything wrong, keep doing. If you're crying out to the Lord, keep crying out to the Lord. If you're doing something good, keep doing good, no matter what others are, that are there to block us. Because on our journey of life, there will be people who will block us. They will come, why are you shouting? Why are you saying this? Because some of, sometimes because they are jealous. They don't want to see you prosper. They don't want to see you in health. They don't want to see you happy. And that's, that's why they're saying, keep quiet. Keep. Yes, in life they would find people who are saying, keep quiet. Don't allow that. If you allow that, then you are assenting, you're accepting to be on the devil's side. We are invited to keep moving, to keep shouting aloud to the Lord. As long as when it comes to speaking to our God, we are invited to shout louder in words, in actions, to present everything possible to the Lord, even the depth of our hearts, even our broken hearts, so that he can put our pieces together. We are invited to shout to the Lord. And nobody should stop you from shouting to the Lord because it is your heart that needs healing. It's your heart that needs to connect to the heart of Jesus. And so shout, cry out to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. Tell the Lord what is going on in your heart, in my heart, in the hearts of others. Not only my heart, but also the hearts of others. Tell the joys that are happening around us. And tell, tell, tell the Lord, thank you. Tell the, the, what is happening around us, especially the painful and challenging moments, so that the Lord can help us out of these challenges. And we see that thanks to that insistent crying out, this man received healing. My brother, my sister, don't give up. Keep shouting to the Lord and he will grant you your sight. The Lord says, your faith has saved you. Meaning, the man was so convinced that, yes, I will not leave Jesus until he grants me what I want. And he kept even shouting louder and louder and louder and louder and until God, Jesus was able to answer him. Let's shout out. And instantly he received the sight. And even... Now the people who are saying stop, stop are the ones at the same time looking at the man who was blind and now healed. They are together now praising the Lord. You see how the human person can be. Okay? That they were already saying why you are shouting what? and now finally they are praising God for what has happened and for the wonders that happened. We too are invited to accompany our brothers and sisters to heal them and to praise God when good things happen to us and to our brothers and sisters. And as we receive the blessings from the Lord and thank him for his healing upon us, we see that the Lord asks this blind man, what do you want me to do for you? And the same Lord is asking you and me, my brother, my sister, what do you want me? What do you want the Lord to do for you? Let's pour out and tell him. He's giving us a chance to tell him what we want him to do for us. Then at his time, his own, in his own way, at this moment, he will do everything for us because nothing is impossible for our Lord. He just wants us to tell him what we want him to do for us and let him do everything at God's own time in his own way. My brother, my sister, what do you want the Lord to do for you and for your brothers and sisters around? Let's open up and tell him what we want him to do for us.
The Lord is there waiting for you and me. Let's invite him on our journey of life and move together with him always and with our brothers and sisters in this journey with a heart that is compassionate, that is full of love, of mercy, of kindness, of forgiveness, and that continues to love all the time and to wish well others as the Lord loves. God bless you once again. Take care.